There we go. We're going to have a fun day today. Um, we have the whole team. Uh, so welcome uh, to the team. It's the first time that we have had a webinar with everybody. So it'll be, it'll be fun. We've got some um, fun information to pass along and share so that you can learn more about us and our team. If you do have questions, please feel free to drop them into the chat and we will answer them or you can raise your hand and we can call on you if you would like to speak um, to answer your question. So also I will point out that you can open the chat if you would like to see um, some of the links that are gonna be shared. It's a little talk bubble at the bottom of WebEx and if you click on that, you're gonna be able to see the chat where we'll have um, links for you to visit throughout today. So first of all, um, we're gonna introduce ourselves. I'll go ahead and start. My name is Ann Staniger, and I am the project manager for the web development team. I've been on the team for um, about eight years this month, and I've been at Iowa State for longer than that. <laughs> um, I think almost 15. Uh, and the strength areas uh, for me and kind of in my position are project management, but I also like to dive into design. I have a graphic design degree and I also enjoy um, diving into the analytics with Hannah. So I'll pass it on to John and the rest of the team will introduce themselves. Hi everyone, I'm John Van Dyke. I'm the team lead. And uh, in addition to that, my role on the team is to keep the infrastructure running. We have about 63 servers, both uh, bare metal and virtual. So uh, I keep those all running smoothly so that there aren't any outages. All right. Anna. Anna? That's my cue. Um, I am Hannah Schultes. I am the content strategist on the web team. I've been here since May, so not too long. Definitely the, the newest member of the team. Um, my strength areas are, I would say, communications, um, campaign management and goal management, and then obviously content strategy. Um, so looking into your analytics and seeing what content's working and what content is not. Hi, I'm Sarah Carney. I'm the front end web developer on the team. I've been with this team for six years in December. Um, I primarily build and code the way the websites look. Um, and there's a lot of focus on accessibility in that role. I also assist with um, customer support and design from time to time. Hi, I'm Angela McMahon. Um, I'm a back end developer. I mostly work on feature development and site auto migrations. Um, I've almost been on the Cal's Elias web team for seven years. Um, I also like to focus on accessibility and development. Um, yeah. Hi, I'm Michael Von Falk. Uh, been here for just over a year. Um, I do various different things in back end development. I guess don't really have anything particular focus, just, you know, if someone's something's needed somewhere, just go and do that. So, Josh. My name is Joshua Pilcher. I have been with the uh, team for just a bit over five years, been with Iowa State for a bit over eight. Uh, my primary focus is feature development along with uh, working with some of our actual Drupal uh, infrastructure, which is, is part of what allows us to produce sites uh, such as faculty sites and some of our center sites, actually our, with our new platform, all of our center sites. Um, that's it. All right, I'd like to give a little bit of background on how this team started. Um, just for a moment, I'd like to take you back to the early days of the web. Uh, people were writing HTML by hand, uh, running on little servers, uh, cast off computers throughout departments. Every department, unit, and program at Iowa State had a website that looked wildly different, and they were often created by a talented student who then graduated. And uh, then I would get the call, "Can you help us with your web with our website?" So several of us 
and different departments at the university decided to collaborate together and start making standard website features because everyone wanted news. Everyone wanted events on their website and the wheel was getting recreated again and again and again. And um, very few people like to enter HTML by hand. So people wanted tools that made it easy to just, you know, type your news item in, uh, attach your image and click submit. So the group of people that were collaborating grew into the CALS LES web, web team that you see here today. Uh, we built a platform together called Luggage, which is our older platform. And uh, we're not so good at naming things, so the word luggage is kind of kind of weird. But um, we, we took on more and more sites. And then we were asked by ITS to develop a replacement for ISU's old uh, public web server which had been there since the start of the web and just contained a, a lot of, of things that were just, you know, put there over the years and they finally decided it was, it was too much. They wanted to shut it down and have something more standardized. So we created sites.istate.edu for faculty websites. And using that same code base, uh, we made our Sites Plus platform, which if you have a website with us, you're probably using either the faculty sites uh, platform or Sites Plus. So by focusing on standardization and automation and having a small team of excellent people, uh, we now support over 550 websites. We provide uh, guidance, content strategy, analytics, new features, and we're able to just kind of work with you to uh, accomplish your goals. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about um, how we got to work on this team, where we came from, and uh, sort of sort of how we got started. And uh, Josh Pilcher, I think you're going to kick us off. Happily, I started out with the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences in the Brenton Center. I was working as a uh, basically a junior web developer with John Rear, for any of you that know him. Um, I worked there for roughly two years, at which point uh, I believe John uh, moved over to the biology, what was then the biology IT web development arm, and I essentially inherited the sites. Uh, and so I continued to work on those uh, for a while, and it became more and more apparent that there was benefits in uh, in working in a larger larger group. And I begged John, begged him to let me onto his team. And at last, he caved in, said yes, and took me under his wing. <laughs> uh, essentially, we merged the CALS, uh, the CALS specific sites and the biology IT sites. And uh, the the ongoing benefits have been tremendous. Um, it's been very nice to work on this team for the last uh, last five or so years. Um, it, it's uh, been great. So I believe Hannah, you are the next to talk. So since I'm so new to the team, I don't have this great Iowa State background, but I can tell you kind of how I got into websites. Um, I studied interactive digital studies at UNI. Um, my first kind of like peek into the website world was when John was talking about the dinosaur land of the beginning website phases. I had a midterm where a professor gave me like just a text document with HTML, which is just like words on a page. And he said, make it look like this picture, like style it like this picture. And so I got 100%. And then I was like, oh, this is this is kind of fun. I think I like this website thing. So I studied more into the marketing side of things. Um, my first two jobs out of college were the client side of things. And so I was working with the web team to try to make my campaigns and goals come to life. Um, and then I kind of was like, I want to I know more about how this works. So I started looking for jobs more on this side. And so I try to bring that client perspective to to the team as much as I can. Angela? Um, I actually originally, when I went to grad school, I originally intended on working in library archives. And I was working at ISU libraries when I was in grad school. But um, I ended up getting a job as a student with biology IT and some of like the data organization skills transferred over really well. And yeah, after that, I transferred into a full-time position. 
Yeah. I also got my start in websites when we were just hard coding HTML files. Um, I liked making simple websites as a kid. Um, my career path has been primarily art and design. And so my first sort of job in websites was as a web designer, and I really enjoyed that and found that gratifying. Um, and I wanted to be able to build what I made because there's always a moment where a design can be lost in translation when it's transferred to a developer. And as I developed skills to code myself, that made that transition so much easier with the developer I was working with. Um, but then I just fell in love with the web development part of it, the coding. Um, and so I started putting out applications <laughs> and John Van Dyke gave me a chance. Thank you, John. And it's been great. All right, so I studied uh, software engineering at UNL and we see once graduated, you know, was looking for jobs, pandemic and whatnot, and eventually found found this, joined up and I think it's been good for me. And of course, when I was little, I also was doing some things like, you know, hand coding HTML, JavaScript and whatnot. So, yeah, I think that's it for me or what? Yeah. Yes. So I skipped myself on this, um, and I guess John too. So if you want to say a couple um, items, you can. Uh, basically, because I think I've said my story many times in these webinars, um, so I'll keep it very short. Um, my career started in graphic design, um, moved into web development as I um, worked for uh, out. I worked for a design firm and really enjoyed that, but really wanted to get into web. Um, moved to working at Iowa State uh, and had that opportunity to learn about web through the Drupal users, Drupal Iowa group. Um, we met with people from all over Iowa, like weekly, and those folks were instrumental. Um, that included John and some others. Um, I think Josh, you were probably in some of those too, where we actually learned, I actually learned more about Drupal and web development and was able to kind of marry those skills and ended up um, eventually making my way to this team. And it's been a lot of fun. So I didn't know if you wanted to say anything about your, like your personal start, John. Um, I know that I, we kind of skipped that, so. Oh, sure. I'm, I'm uh, an old gray beard, um, literally now, and uh, cut my teeth on early computing, was always interested in computers, even though I pursued um, a career in entomology. I'm actually an assistant professor in the uh, what was the entomology department and is now the plant patho uh, plant pathology, entomology, and microbiology department recently merged. So I kind of have uh, multiple roles, and leading the web team is one of those roles. But I've always been interested in uh, systems, in Unix, and just coding, um, and really bridging that gap to to help academics uh, reach their goals through providing tools and, and other things for them. Excellent. So at this point, at this time, what we'd like to do is start walking through some of the features that exist um, on, the, on the platform that we, we have uh, collaborated on and built together. So we'll go ahead and start that journey um, by talking about faculty sites, and then we will talk about the Sites Plus websites um, and mention some of the features that are listed on those. So Michael is going to start us off with faculty websites. All right. So, so yeah, we have our faculty websites where basically faculty member can come in, basically just make a website. And some of the features we have in there is they can make people profiles, can manage content editors in case you want anyone else to be able to edit your website. Edit, like the menu at the top of the pages, edit the home page, make new pages, and also edit the footer and contact information. And you'd also add videos, images, and files to those pages. Websites are already mobile friendly, so you look them on a phone screen, it'll all look good. And also, also they are accessible by default, where if someone has to use a screen reader, they would should not have any problems using any of our sites. All right. and I'll let Angela take it away for Sites Plus. 
Um, so our more advanced sites are called sites plus sites. These are more for users that have like um, maybe um, like a lab site with a lot of content or a department site. So something that's a little bit more involved than a personal faculty site. Our sites plus websites um, have more features. They also um, generally involve working with our team a little bit more. So our team will help you with your content layout, your web, your front page design, um, and really anything else you would need. If you need something more advanced than we provide, we would be willing to work with you on that as well. Um, so some of the additional features we have on Sites Plus sites are news, um, events. We also allow users to create podcasts. Um, we have resources if you have uh, like uh, affiliated websites or other websites that aren't on your site that you want to link to, like if you have a project somewhere else. Um, we also have uh, research projects. So if you want to feature some of your lab's research or your department's research, we have that available. And we just added the ability to link that to your people profiles. So um, if you need to feature like what your faculty members are working on, we have that available now. Um, we also have content taxonomy categorization, such as news and event streams for uh, categorizing all of your content and organizing it for users to peruse. Thank you so much. So there's a lot there. Um, we have a lot of features. This is a good time to, uh, I thought we could break and see if you have any questions for us. We've sort of uh, presented a little bit of information. We have additional questions that uh, we have prepared to answer, but we want to give you the opportunity to ask us questions uh, if you have any in regards to features or building websites or even about our journeys. You can raise your hand or you can put them in chat. I'm not seeing anything, so we'll go ahead and continue. Please don't hesitate, like raise your hand, ask a question. We're all open to that here. So the first question that we have, um, these are going to be based on some of the common questions we get from folks. How can I get more people to experience my website? And we're going to let Hannah take that one away question because it means you're not just throwing stuff on the wall and hoping that it sticks. So if you're interested in this answer and want to know more, please reach out to our team and I will meet with you and we can really dive in deep. But the quick answer to this is our tool called Site Improve. You can spend five minutes a week and fix little technical errors on your site that will help um, increase the visibility through search engines and things like that. So the quick answer is your Site Improve reports that you are getting to your email. Um, the longer answer is our other tool called Matomo, which tracks uh, analytics on your website. And so you are also probably getting a monthly report for this. And if you're not, please reach out again. Um, this really allows you to dive in deep into what content is working and what content isn't and what goals you're achieving and what you aren't. So we have a lot of tools on the team um, and we're so happy to help you with them if you have questions or desires or goals that you are trying to achieve. Excellent. Thank you, Hannah. The next question is, how can I work with this team to suggest feature improvements? And we'll go ahead and give this to Josh. Let me just begin by saying my screen froze. So I'm assuming you're asking about how I can work with the team to suggest feature improvements. Um, if that is in fact the question, the answer is actually pretty straightforward. Uh, you would start by contacting us at web support at isstate.edu. That is our, our main contact point, and, and it's the best one because we're all watching the emails that come in, essentially. Uh, Anne and Sarah and Hannah are, are very much more focused on it than maybe the backend developers, but we all get to participate. Uh, the key with feature improvements is that there's a wide range of complexity that, that happens with, with features when they're requested. So, 
initially, um, if it's a simple feature request, you would email in and then we would have a chance to discuss it on on the as developers, front end developers, as admins, as uh, metrics people. And we would we would do our best to put together something that meets your needs. If it's more complex, it may be it may start with having a meeting with Anne or Sarah or Hannah to really get down to what it is you're looking to accomplish. It's not always uh, cut and dried. So just know that that's the basic process. And of course, any feature that you put in, we will give uh, our absolute attention to. We may not be able to do all of them, but we'll certainly try and meet your needs. Um, even if it isn't exactly the way you expected. So just to reiterate, web support at iastate.edu. And back to you. Thank you. Thank you. And again, just a reminder to please watch the chat. Michael is um, putting in all of the links for you. So you're going to be able to um, directly, you know, see that web support at iState.edu or visit our website a little bit further. The next question. Will my website get updated to the new theme? And Sarah is going to take that one for us. Yes. Um, so uh, over the summer, you may have noticed that Iowa State's homepage got a new design and layout. And so that design came from the Office of the President created a team, I believe, and they worked with a consultant to do an entire redesign of the look and feel of Iowa State's website. Um, and it has been directed that all websites at Iowa State should begin to adopt um, this theme over the next year or so. So we are doing that. That is our goal. Um, the theme is separate from the platform. It's separate from your content. So what we're working on is referencing all of those assets that um, the theme team has provided to us, what it should look like, how it should work, and then using that to code our own theme to apply to your existing website. So it's not something where we're gonna move you to another platform. Your website will still work in just the same way, mostly, and um, it will just have that that new theme. Um, the first priority are websites that are focused on on students, student recruitment as well, because that's this the whole point of this is to enhance student improvement. Um, the timeline, uh, we're it's one of our main things we're working on right now. Um, the whole team is involved in making this new theme work. We're testing, we're developing the features on the new theme. It's going well. We're excited. Excellent. Thank you, Sarah. I'm just looking to see if there's some questions. I'm going to pop out the chat here for a moment. Oh, that's a great question from Ben Rurick. Right. Excellent. So Ben is asking. Um, let me see if I can. Paraphrases. He's wondering about the relationship and differences, primarily in the scope of services or team size between our team, CALS and LAS, and the web dev team at ITS, and possibly their web API um, integration development team as well. So I'm going to, I could go ahead and answer this if you want. I'll pass this to John. John, do you want to answer this, please? Sure. Yeah. So, uh... The CALS LAS web team is is uh, supported by the CALS and LAS colleges. So those are our primary clients. And if you are affiliated with with uh, one of those colleges or our unit in that college, uh, you have access really to the whole team and, and to our skills and support. Um, the web dev team in ITS is more of a um, of a university level provider. They're responsible for things like uh, Iowa State's admission site or the Iowa State site itself, things at the university level rather than at the college level. They also provide, uh, I believe, a, uh, a service for uh, hosting websites if you have no, no place to host it. Um, and in terms of um, web API integration development team, I haven't heard that that term used before, um, but we do, um, I mean, obviously we, we know the people on the web dev team. Um, and in fact, we used to have a group on campus called the web special interest group and we had regular meetings that sort of went away in recent years with, uh, with COVID, but we, we still, um, 
communicate with them. And um, obviously we're all kind of doing the same thing, providing websites for Iowa State. Excellent, thank you. Thank you for the question, Ben. Um, and I hope that gives you a good answer. If anybody else has questions like Ben, please put them in the chat. We are happy to answer them. The next item um, is that we have a couple minutes left, so we might as well um, answer another question here, which is um, sharing some of the latest CALS and LAS website updates. So um, I'm going to let Hannah take that away. Some of these items could be very helpful for you. Okay, so if you go to the link in the chat in a second, I'm sure. Um, you will find some of the new resources we've been adding to our website to help our clients um, achieve ch achieve goals and, and try to add content with more strategy than just throwing it up on the wall, as I mentioned before. So we've recently started a blog and we try to get something on there every month. Uh, it doesn't always happen, but that is um, open to any topic. So if you have any suggestions or anything you want to learn more about, please send them our way and we will try to put some information together for you that could help, you know, the, the good of the cause. Um, we also have some resource guides. So if you go to the, the resources link, you'll see some fillable uh, PDFs that you can use to try to start your content strategy journey for your website. Things like your um, site's website purpose, your site's primary audience, um, improving SEO on a page by page basis. We have all these, all these great guides for you to use um, if you're kind of trying to start this journey on your own. Um, and then lastly, we've been putting together this great webinar series all semester, and we have the recordings for all of the ones that have happened thus far. So we encourage you to go back and watch those if you're interested in any of the individual topics. Um, and I'm sure this is something we'll continue to do. So. We'll probably be brainstorming our next series in the coming month or two, and we will have, you know, more more coming out for you guys to improve your websites. I think that's everything. Um, I would like to plug one other thing. Our next webinar is, I think, is it December 7th? Mm -hmm. December yeah. 7th. And so that is called Course Correcting, What to Do If Your Site Isn't Reaching Its Goals. Excellent. Yes, we hope you can join us for that webinar and thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, we enjoy keeping um, all of these 540 plus websites um, secure and um, I, I wanted, I don't want to leave without letting you know that this team is very uh, adamant and strong about keeping all of your websites secure. So even though you develop it with us the first time and we work with you and you're talking back and forth with us and then maybe some months go by and your website still exists, but you might not have talked directly with us. It doesn't mean that we're not actively continuing to um, monitor your website, um, make sure it's secure and um, gets all of the latest uh, and greatest features that are available. So please continue to reach out if you have questions. And with that, I think we will end today's webinar. Thank you all so much for joining. Have a great day.